a few salads would be great. A salad and some water, maybe. Yeah, that'd be great.、Um, Kirk salad. ordered lunch. He ordered salads, and you'll see this was a mistake in a moment. Right at the beginning, the ape began sucking our tracks, and I thought, well, he's got a taste for them, so look at him trying to steer me out. I was trying to put it in his mouth to keep him happy. Then he seemed happy to eat them. They're very tasteful. Here comes the salad. In came the lunch. Now he noticed our salads, but I said to bring a plain salad for the orangutan and to put cheese and tomato on ours, and that caused Bam Bam to break the tenth commandment. He began to covet our lunch because ours was obviously better than his. So I decided I'd give him my lunch. I sacrificed my lunch for this scene, and you can see he's quite happy with it. He's eating the cheese. He's eating the tomato. Apparently, apes having poor dining etiquette disproves evolution. The incident reinforced the fact that the primate is limited when it comes to the unique ability, the human ability, to reason, to invent, to appreciate the sound of music. You see, you don't get orangutans forming themselves into an orchestra. You don't get them forming themselves into a court system to mete out justice to its fellow creatures. This isn't because he's a prehistoric man who is less evolved than us. But it's because he's another species. The revered father of evolution, the man who really made the theory popular, is Charles Darwin. He wrote *Origin of Species* and *The Descent of Man*. Ladies, listen to what he had to say about women. The chief distinction in the intellectual powers of the two sexes is shown by man attaining to a higher eminence in whatever he takes up than women can attain, whether requiring deep thought, reason, or imagination, or merely the use of the senses and hands. Did you hear that? He's saying that man has evolved to a higher eminence over women in. Basically, anything he decides to do, whether it requires reason, imagination, or deep thought. Darwinian evolution, at its core, is not only male chauvinistic, but it's also very racist. Charles Darwin wants us to believe that black people are less evolved than whites. There are quite a few fundamental problems with what Cameron is saying right now. 
First of all, to anybody who actually understands evolution, which clearly Cameron and Comfort don't, evolution is not racist whatsoever. Second of all, why don't we take a look for comparison of the racism that's seen in the Bible? And keep in mind, this is coming from a Christian, but that doesn't change the fact that it is objectively there. For example, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 14.34-35. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, for they are commanded to be under obedience. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. That actually sounds pretty sexist to me. We could go down to Leviticus 12.2-12.5, 2 where basically it says that a woman is unclean for seven days if she gives birth to a male child, but she's unclean from 14 to 66 days if she gives birth to a female child. Or any of the many other places in the Old Testament where it goes on to say, there's even actually one verse where it claims to say that it's after a battle, saying, go on and, and kill the babies and rape the women. Now the irony and the hypocrisy of the situation is that ev evolution says absolutely nothing nothing about sexism, yet, however, the literalistic point of view in the Bible that they're promoting absolutely does at its core. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a quote mine is what happens when you take a quote completely out of context to convey a meaning which supports your agenda and which is completely um, conflicted by which the, the author originally meant. For example, in the last video, I gave you the quote by Stephen Jay Gould when he was talking about the fossil record. Um, Cameron and Comfort completely lied about what he said and ignored his clarifications to suit their own agenda. Now, this next basic string of videos is, is essentially them going on and quote, quote mining most scientists. And keep in mind, take a look at the dates at which they lived regarding evolution. If we can't convince you of how unscientific the theory of evolution is, perhaps these following experts can. Ernest Chain, Nobel Prize winner, said in reference to the theory of evolution, I would rather believe in fairies than in such wild speculation. Sir Arthur Keith, the physical anthropologist and anatomist who wrote the foreword to Darwin's Origin of the Species 100th Anniversary Edition, said, Evolution is unproved and unprovable. We believe it only because the only alternative is special creation, and that is unthinkable. To begin with, this man died before the, D the structure of DNA was even discovered. Okay, he was born a year after the Civil War ended, so I think that says something in itself. So the second problem with this quote is that there's no source whatsoever for it in the sense of nowhere is this quote ever directly mentioned from it. If you take a look on Amazon or Air anywhere, you will never find a trace of it, of him ever even uttering it. The only place it will ever show up is on creationist websites, which I think is very telling. Lastly, about the uh, being attributed to him in the, in the foreword of the 100th anniversary edition of Origin of Species, um, he died in 1955. The 100th anniversary was written in 1959. So, I don't know exactly how he wrote the foreword four years after he died and included this because it's definitely not there. Malcolm Muggeridge, British journalist and philosopher, said, I myself am convinced that the theory of evolution especially the extent to which it's been applied, will be one of the great jokes in history books of the future. To begin with, Malcolm Muggeridge was born in 1903. Second of all, he's not exactly a biologist whatsoever. He's a journalist and a philosopher. So his opinion on biological matters is relatively moot.